Hi and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one we're taking a look at some tools you can use to improve the quality of your code. We're looking at the workflow analyzer and we'll also export a workflow to Excel to see what that looks like. And then at the end I have a slight surprise and a free gift, if you will, <laughs> to those of you wanting to download that. It's a little tool that I've made to give myself a better overview of some of the code that I'm writing. So let's get to it. So what is the workflow analyzer? Well, if we open my uh, little project here, we have here a sequence with a bunch of code inside of it. And this, I promise you, is a real mess. This is something that I'm working on, and this is at a very early stage. But I'll share it with you, and we'll run the workflow analyzer on it to see what I can improve. So the workflow analyzer is a static code analyzer. And we find it up here in the Analyze File button menu. And there's a couple of items down here. There's the Analyze Project. Of course, there's the Analyze File button. And then there's the Validate File and Validate Project options. And the validation options simply check that you can execute the automation, that you don't have any errors. For example, if you have an unfinished string like this on an activity, this would fail the validation, like here. So if um, if I correct that error and validate it again, it'll say no errors found. And that's what the validation function does. And we're not going to spend any more time on that. But the analysis functions go a little bit deeper. And you can either analyze at the file level or at the project level. And they do the same thing except at different scopes. We'll just analyze at the file level here. But before we do that, we'll go into the workflow analyzer settings and see what this is all about. So what the workflow analyzer will do is it'll look at your code and based on some predefined rules that are included in Studio, it will make recommendations on how you can improve your code. For example, if you have an empty workflow, it'll warn you about that and tell you you have an empty workflow here. Maybe you should remove it. If you have some uh, activities that cannot be reached through the path of execution in your code, if you have incomplete if statements, if you don't use the correct prefixes for your variables or arguments, things like that are checked through the use of the workflow analyzer. And if we have a look at the columns here, we can see that all of the rules can be enabled or disabled over here on the left. You can also cherry pick and say, I don't want to apply this rule or that rule, but generally I just have them all enabled. The code column shows the code for each individual rule. And UiPath have applied a naming convention to the rule codes for example, this ST means that this is included in Studio, and MG means that this is a naming convention rule, and this is simply the sixth naming convention rule that is defined. Then it has a name column, of course, with the name of each of the rules. It has a scope column, and rules can be applied at different scopes, either at the activity level, at the workflow level, or at the project level. And then finally, you can define what action should be taken when a rule is breached when running the analyzer. And most of them are set to a sensible level, you know, it'll give you a warning or an error in the errors list panel that we'll see in just a second. But in here are all the rules, and if you click on one of the codes for the rules, you will actually see a description or documentation for that rule on the UiPath website. So use that to explore all of the different rules before you decide to activate or especially deactivate the rules. They all make pretty good sense. Now, if we go quickly into the settings of UiPath Studio, in the Design tab, there's a couple of settings that I also talked about in my settings video, and there will be a link to that at the end of this video and in the description below. But here you can define that you want to enforce the use of the workflow analyzer before you publish a project, or even before you even run a project. I don't like this setting uh, too much. But it's actually not a bad idea because it forces you to sort of correct the small mistakes as you go instead of what I do in this project is I haven't run the code analyzer yet. And when I run it in just a second, we will probably see close to 100 errors in my code. So let's try and run it. And we can see that it comes up with 67 warnings and two information messages. There are no critical errors. So I could run this project and publish it and everything else without any problems. The problems will show up in a couple of months when I need to correct an error in this project because I will have no clue what my code does because my naming of activities is really terrible. Everything has the default names. And if we look in the list of errors here, we can see that, <laughs> you know, uh, the name defaults, you know, activity assign has a default name, activity assign has a default name. All of these activities, I haven't done anything to sort of describe what it is they do. 
so this is you know th this accounts for a very large part of the errors in my code is that I haven't named my activities properly. Also, I have a couple of deeply nested activities warnings. And what that is, is simply that I have a very deep branching of my code, and it'll give me a warning at level 7, and mine goes down to level 10, it seems. So that's not very good. It also has some display names that are duplicated. It has a couple of incomplete if statements, some variables that aren't prefixed properly, one redundant sequence that is simply probably empty, and then there's a couple of unused dependencies. So, for example, the UiPath database activities package is not used in my automation. So if I go up here to my project settings and we can remove this. And if I run the analyzer one more time, we should see one less warning over here. So what you'll have to do is simply go through each of these and say, okay, this assign activity, what is it it's doing? And then uh, give it a proper name uh, so you know what value is it assigning to what variable, for example. Uh, and that's something I really need to work on. And we can see how bad this is when we look over here in the outline window or outline pane of uh, UiPath Studio, that if we expand this little tree view of all of the uh, activities, we can see that they are simply named try and for each row and body and sequence and assign and assign. I can't really read anything out of this as far as what my automation is doing. I can just see the, the bare bones structure of it. But if I named things correctly, I would pretty much be able to read what my automation is doing just by looking at this outline view. So absolutely a clear recommendation for me is use the workflow analyzer and get the errors corrected as soon as possible and before you deploy or release and archive the code to somewhere where you won't see it for months. Now, speaking of this outline view, I promised you we were going to take a look at another function in UiPath Studio, and that was the export to Excel function. So let's jump to another project I have here. And this is just a clean uh, project. I haven't done any uh, modifications to it, but this is a robotic enterprise framework template, and this is the main file in that template. And inside of that template and in the main SAML file, if you know the framework, it has uh, some different states, and inside of those different states, things happen. And there are transitions between the states and stuff like that. We're not going to go into that here. There's a link below to a series of videos that I've done about this framework. But what we want to do here is we want to export this file to Excel. And we do that by clicking this button up here and then defining where do you want to save this. I want to save it here and it'll be named main.xlsx. And that's because the file in my project, and now we can see it was exported successfully, the file in my project is actually called main SAML. So now if we go to this folder, we can see that we have a main Excel file here. And if we open that, we can see the structure of the entire framework main SAML file. And that includes all of the different states and each of the phases of the transitions and the states and uh, the activities, the try catches, and even the values of the properties of the individual activities. So there's really a lot of information in here. Now, saving one of these can really give you a good overview of what's going on inside your code. And I would recommend you take a look at these. Now, I've taken one more step, and that is in the project we were looking at to begin with, called the settings project. What this will actually do, and this is hard coded and it's a big mess so far, I will release this for all of you to download once it's a little bit better. But what this will do is it'll take that Excel file and then iterate through all of the data in it and it will build an HTML file. Right now it's not perfect, but let's try to uh, run this real quick. Um, and now inside our folder, we'll have an HTML file as well. So if we open that, we can see that this is a tree view, much like the one in the outline view in UiPath Studio. But this has all of the details that you saw in the Excel workbook as well. So if we go into the process transaction state, we can see that it will try at some point down here, it will try to invoke the process workflow file with different um, uh, properties, arguments, and so forth. And that will just give you a really good overview of your code. Now I'm working on making this a little bit prettier and also adding some functionality to expand all of the nodes at once and stuff like that. If you're really good at HTML or JavaScript and would like to help me do this, drop me a note in the comments below or find me on LinkedIn. And maybe we can work on this together to make it something that other people could use. 
So this was just my little video on how you can improve code quality in UiPath Studio. There's more coming. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, give it a like and hit the notification bell so you'll know when more stuff is coming out, including this little workflow. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe. See you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.